I used to wonder about that myself. Thought it was a bunch of mumbo jumbo. Jailbreak a PlayStation 3 in just one third of the time from when we last looked at this just months ago? Crazy thing is, it's true. The PlayStation 3, the jailbreak in one third of the time, all of it. And I'm about to show you how to do it because in this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps that you need to take to get your PlayStation 3 fat or slim console jailbroken in just one third of the time. And it all starts right now. Hey there, if this is your first time here, my name's Blaine. And my channel is all about helping you get the most out of your video game experiences. So if you like original content about restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other great video game content, smash that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out. Let's get into it. In the days of not too long ago, if you tried to jailbreak your PlayStation 3 and it wasn't compatible with the jailbreak process, you were going to brick it. With these new tools, that's not so much of a challenge because the new tools will actually look ahead of time to make sure your console is compatible with jailbreak before it even attempts to, and it'll give you a green check to say it is, or a red X to say it isn't. I think it's worth going and looking on the PS Dev Wiki on the PS3 section, linked in the description below, before you even get started with this process though, so that you don't waste any time. In summary, if you have the fat model PS3, you're good to go with this process. If you have the slim model PS3 in the 2000s, then you're good to go. If you have a PS3 Slim in the 2500s, it's a maybe. And if you have the Super Slim model 3000 or 4000, it's a no-go. It's worth taking the time to just look at this before you dive in headfirst, just to make sure that your model's compatible. If you see yellow, it's a maybe, and if you see red, it's a no-go. Check your model against the dev wiki first. What makes this jailbreak process so special is how few supplies are actually needed. Of course, you need a PS3 fat or slim model that is compatible with the jailbreak process. I'm using a PS3 fat model here. Online access for your PS3. A USB drive formatted in FAT32 format no matter the USB drive size. And a Windows PC to run a specific application. That's it. You'll need to make sure that you're on a modern version of the official firmware to get started. Slide over to settings on your PS3 menu. Come down until you get to system settings. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and one up. That's where system information is located. Select it and you'll see which version of the system firmware that you're on. In this case, I'm on 4.86, which is the one that I recommend, but anything from 4.82 to 4.86 will work. You'll see a slight shift in the date and time here where I re-recorded some video, pay it no mind. Press circle to go back one level to get to settings. Then scroll down until you get to date and time settings and press the X button. You'll need to make sure you have the right date and time on your console to move forward. So select date and time and just set it over the internet. That should get you caught up. Press circle to go back and keep pressing circle to go back to the settings menu. Once you get there, scroll over to the right until you get to internet. Scroll down until you get to internet browser and then press the X button. There are some tasks inside Internet Browser that should be completed before you move forward. Press Triangle and then scroll up with the D-pad to Tools. In the Tools menu, go to the Cookies section and make sure you select Allow with the X button. Now press Triangle again, go back to Tools. In Tools, make sure you go to JavaScript and make sure that it's enabled and press the X button. Press Triangle again. You'll want to set your home page to the blank page. It just makes things a little cleaner moving forward. So scroll down to home page and press X. Now scroll down and pick use blank page. Press X. Scroll down. Get to OK. And press the X button again. And press triangle again. Go up to tools. Press the X button. There are four deletes to do here. Scroll down to delete cookies and press X. Slide over, pick yes. Press triangle, go to tools, and scroll down until you get to delete search history and press X. Slide over, hit X on yes. Triangle again, back to tools, then scroll down again until you get to delete cache. Slide over, select yes. Triangle one more time, up to Tools, 
Then scroll down again until you get to delete authentication information and press X. Slide over, X for yes. Now close the browser completely out. Press circle. It'll say, are you sure you wanna close? Slide over to the left, pick yes. Now press X to go right back into the browser. Press start on the controller. This is gonna pull up the virtual keyboard. You'll need to access the following website, ps3exploit.com. Note that there's no E in the word exploit here, just ps3exploit.com. It's the hub for everything we'll be doing moving forward here. Press select on the controller so that you can add this to your bookmarks for current and future easy access. Pick add a bookmark with X, scroll down, and press X to select it to add it as a bookmark. Using the left analog stick on the controller, move the cursor pointer up to where it says BG Toolset. Now scroll down to where it says Main Site. Then press the X button to select it. If you see this prompt, just tell it yes and then scroll down to Do Not Display Again and select the checkbox. Then press X to continue. This BG Tools website is the gift to us gamers that has literally cut the jailbreak process time in half. Go ahead and bookmark it right now so that you'll have it as an easy reference point moving forward. Use the left analog stick to move the pointer up to where it says Flash Memory Manager and press the X button. The website's going to take just a moment to analyze what kind of console you have and its suitability for the jailbreak process. You'll hear your console beep three times and when it's done, you'll see either a green check mark or a red X right here. Of course, this is a fat model, so it's guaranteed to be jailbreakable. But if you get a red X here, just go ahead and stop because you can't do this. You can go the PS3 hen route, and we'll talk about that in a different video. Now that you know that your PS3 can be jailbroken, let's back up your system memory. Insert your USB drive that's FAT32 formatted into the rightmost USB port on your console. Use the left analog stick to move the pointer over to flash memory and press the X button. Then scroll down to save flash memory backup and press the X button. You'll be presented with some choices as to where you can save your backup. You want the one that says Dev USB 000. It's easy to find and that's why you put it in the rightmost port out of your USB port choices. Now it will do a backup of what's called the dump.hex file. That's your system memory on your PlayStation 3. If anything goes wrong, you'll be able to take this to someone who has a hardware flasher and restore your PS3 right back to its original state. The backup can take several minutes depending on which model of PS3 you have. Once the backup process is complete, select close with the X button and then remove the USB drive from your PlayStation 3 and put it into your Windows-based PC. Let's make sure that the backup file that copied over to the USB drive is legitimate and not corrupted in any way before proceeding. A quick note here, you'll need to have file name extensions turned on so that you can show them as you're going through this process. Click on the View tab and then move over to the right of the screen and you'll see file name extensions with a checkbox next to it. Make sure there's a check in that box so that you can see the file name extensions moving forward. All of the upcoming links are listed in the description below. Let's go ahead and get the downloads that you need moving forward. In your web browser, go to this address which is on the GitHub to get Pi PS3 Checker. This is a piece of software that will take that dump.hex file which we'll address in just a moment and make sure that the backup from your PS3 has no warnings, no errors, and is a complete and safe backup copy. It's just not completely intuitive on the GitHub where to get this. What you actually want to do is download it from where it says View Raw. Click that, and then the PyPS3 checker file will download. There are a number of different kinds of custom firmware you can install on your PlayStation 3. For this example, I'm going to be using the Ferrex Cobra custom firmware because I found that it works very well and it's very easy to install with a minimum of steps. The download link at the PSX Place website is right here, but keep this page open because you're gonna need this. It's called an MD5 number. It's basically just an alphanumeric value that establishes the legitimacy 
of the custom firmware that you're downloading. The custom firmware is on the Mega site. Just click on the Save button to download the software. No need to watch paint dry. Download Accelerated. Let's move on. Every jailbroken PlayStation 3 deserves to have Multiman on it. This is one of the best content management software pieces you can possibly install. It lets you not only back up your PlayStation 3 disc directly to your hard drive, but gives you access to all kinds of other amazing features. Follow the link in the description below to this website, which is called Brewology. Grab the download right here where it says Multiman Base. All the way over to the right, there's a download link. Click it and you'll download the package file that you'll need to install. Let's check your system backup memory file, that dump.hex file, to make sure everything went to plan. Go to your USB drive. Grab this dump.hex file and copy it. First, make a backup of it. I just put it right here on the desktop for now. You can put it wherever you want to save your backup files. Go to the Downloads folder. Where you see this PyPS3 checker, extract this folder. You don't need to open the folder when it's done, just extract it. Now delete the compressed volume to prevent confusion. Go into the PyPS3 checker folder and paste the dump.hex file here also. This isn't for the purpose of backing up, this is so you can actually check it. Take that dump.hex file and dump it right here where it says to drag and drop it. You'll probably get a message that it's been blocked. Click more info and then run anyway. It'll run a quick check of this file and what you're looking for is all the way at the bottom. You want to make sure there are no dangers and no errors anywhere in this process. If there are, run that whole dump.hex backup process once again. Let's go ahead and prep the USB drive to copy over the custom firmware and Multiman. Click on the USB drive. The dump.hex file is still there, but you can delete it at this point since it's backed up on your local computer. Make a folder here and name it PS3 in all caps. Then go into the PS3 folder. Make a new folder here and name it Update in all caps. Go back to the Downloads folder. Grab Multiman, the package file, and copy it. Then go back to the USB and paste it right on the root. Now go back to the Downloads folder. Grab your custom firmware file and copy it. Back to USB. Go into the PS3 folder and the Update folder. Then paste the custom firmware file in that folder. So it's root. PS3, update, and then put the custom firmware file right there. Before you put the custom firmware into your PlayStation 3, let's just check the binary on it and make sure everything's okay. Go to onlinemd5.com and let's check it. Click here to upload your custom firmware file to the site. So go to your USB drive, PS3, update, and double click your custom firmware file to upload it to the site. As it's finishing up, remember I mentioned you need to keep the Ferrex Cobra website open so you can get that MD5 number? Here's where it comes into play. Go back to the tab where you have your Ferrex Cobra site open and double click on and copy the MD5 number right underneath the download. Then go back to the tab with the online MD5 checker and paste the number. Then click on compare. If you get the green check mark here, everything's good to go. If you get a red check mark here, stop, go back and delete the custom firmware and re-download it and recheck the MD5. At this point, rename your custom firmware to ps3updat.pup. ps3updat.pup. Now you can safely eject the USB drive from your PC and put it back into your PlayStation 3 on the USB port to the farthest right available. Back on the PlayStation 3 in the internet browser, you'll need to patch your system for it to be able to accept a custom firmware file. Using the left analog stick, navigate to where it says Flash Memory Patch, then press it with the X button. Then slide down to where it says load patch via HTTPS. This will take care of it in an online automatic process. Then press X. 
This can take several minutes depending on which model of PlayStation 3 you have. Just let it run its course. When it's done, you'll get a confirmation sound. Just click on close to continue. Now that the patch has been loaded into your system RAM, go ahead and install it. Click on flash memory patch again with the X button. Scroll all the way down to apply loaded patch and select it with the X button. Alright, here's where the magic happens. This is the part where you're actually doing the beginning steps of jailbreaking your PlayStation 3. Slide over to yes with the green check mark and press X to continue. Be careful not to interrupt power to your console at any point during this process. Once it's done, click X on close to continue. You'll need to restart your PlayStation 3 for the patch to take full effect. So go ahead and close out of the browser. Press the circle button to get to the menu and then close the browser to go back. Scroll all the way to the left and click on turn off system. When the PS3 powers back on, you can install your custom firmware like you would any official firmware. Go to system, system update, install by storage media, and you'll see right here Ferrex Cobra as your option. Click on OK with the X button to continue. Press right on the D-pad to scroll past these acknowledgements. Scroll down and press X to accept. Just like before, don't interrupt the power to the console or you can brick it. You don't have to turn it off afterward. We'll manage that in just a minute. Just scroll down and press X to start. If at any point during this process the console's powered itself off but not powered itself back on, that's no problem. Just press the power button to resume the install process for your custom firmware. Once it's done, it should power itself off one last time to restart, and when it fires back up, you should see this. Instead of the PS3 logo, you'll now see the Ferrex Cobra logo. Congratulations, that means you've installed your custom firmware correctly. But the task isn't done just yet. Don't forget, you want multi-man on this system so that you can do all kind of things that jailbreaking your PS3 now permits you to do. Go over to the game section on the PlayStation 3 menu and scroll all the way to the bottom. You should see a new feature here that says Package Manager. Let's go ahead and install Multi-Man on your PS3. Select Package Manager, then scroll down to Install Package Files and press the X button. Then scroll down until you see Standard and press the X button. You'll find from your USB storage the Multi-Man install package file selected with the X button. Once the package file is installed, it'll go back to the Package Manager menu. Scroll down one and you will now see Multi-Man installed on your PlayStation 3. Press the X button to launch the software. After a brief loading screen, Multi-Man will be up and running. You'll be able to do all kind of incredible things with your PlayStation 3 that you were never able to do before. I recommend the next step in this process is to learn how to copy over games from your PlayStation 3 disc to your hard drive for improved reliability, faster gameplay performance, and reduced wear on your Blu-ray drive. Check out this video here, shown on screen and linked both in the description below and in the pinned comments to learn exactly how to get that done. I'll look forward to seeing you there.